This video is about declensions. In particular, we will understand how to use a word's declension to manipulate its forms to fit the word's function in a Latin sentence. Understanding declensions is an important step to reading and writing Latin sentences, but what really is a declension? Let's take a look at a basic Latin sentence as an example. We have the sentence puella canem amat. In the sentence, we have the word puella, which means girl. We also have amat, which is a verb meaning love. And we also have the word canem. Here, canes is in the accusative case, canem. This means that instead of doing the action, canem is receiving the action. Puella ends in a short a, which means she is in the nominative case and she is doing the action, which in this sentence is amat. The girl loves the dog. What if we try it the other way around? What if we had canes puellam amat? In this sentence, canes ends in is, which means he is the nominative subject of the sentence, doing the action. Puellam ends in am, which means she is the accusative, receiving the action. So this sentence means the dog loves the girl. The dog is the one who's loving, which makes him the subject, so he is in the nominative form. He is doing the action in the sentence. Let's take a look at these two sentences together. In our first sentence, Puella Kanem Amat, the girl was the one doing the action. We were saying that she loves the dog. So, the dog is not the one loving in that sentence, he's receiving the love. As such, he is in his accusative form, which is Kanem. On that same note, this is why Puella changed to Puellam. In the first sentence, Puella Kanem Amat, she was the subject, as she was the one loving. And in the second sentence, Kanes Puellam Amat, opposite order, she is the one being loved. So now we can see why we need to know cases. It tells us who the subject is and who the object is and who is doing the action in the sentence. But there are more than two cases. What are the functions of the other cases? Let's look at another sentence that has another case. Puella cum cane ambulat. Okay, we have Puella again, so we know it's the girl who's doing the action. Ambulat is her verb meaning walking, so the girl is walking. But what do cum and cane do in the sentence? Cane is the ablative form of canes. The ablative form has a few different functions, but one of the functions is that it works with certain prepositions. A preposition is a word that shows the relationship between two nouns, like on, in, or by, or with. In this case, cum means with and cum always works with the word in the ablative case. So, if you want to say that the girl is with the dog, we need the word cum, and we need dog to be in the ablative case to show that he is working with cum. So, we have cum cane. So, puella cum cane ambulat means the girl is walking with the dog. Now, what if we had the sentence puella canem in via muidet? We have Puella again, our nominative. We have Kanem, with that EM, that's our accusative. We know that because Puella is in the nominative case, she's doing the action, which here is to see, we did. We also know that she is seeing the dog. The dog is receiving the action because he's in the accusative case. We also have here, Wea. Wea ends in a long A. That tells us that this is an ablative word. One of the functions of the ablative is to tell the place where the action is happening. So this sentence says, Puella sees the dog in the street, or the girl sees the dog in the street. So why do the endings look different in Puella and Canis? If Puella is nominative and Canis is nominative, why do they have different endings? Why do kane and puella have different endings if they're both ablative? Well, the reason why is because puella and kanes are in different declensions. A declension is a group of nouns that all have the same endings. The ending of a noun depends on the declension, the case, and the number, number being whether that noun is singular or plural. So let's look at our noun charts again. You have these in your foldable. Let's take a look at our first declension nouns. First declension nouns end in A, 
A-M and a long A in the singular, A-E and A-S in the plural. These are words like puella. The way we would put puella into its different forms is listed here. Puella, puellam, puella, puellae, and puellas. If we're looking at words like canis, which are third declension words, they have these endings. We notice a blank in the nominative singular. That is because there are many different endings for the third declension nominative. However, the accusative singular will always end in em, and the ablative singular will always end in a short e. The nominative and accusative plural both end in long es. Words like canis will decline this way. Canis, canem, cane, canes, canes. If we look at our second declension nouns, we know that there is a second declension masculine and a second declension neutral, which is also listed in your foldable. The singular ending for a second declension nominative always ends in us. The accusative always ends in um, and the ablative always ends in long o. For the neuter, we notice that both the nominative and the accusative singular are in the um. The way we determine the difference between those is the function that they have in the sentence. An example of a second declension masculine word is servus, which we know means slave. This declines as servus, servum, servo, servi, servos. An example of a neutral second declension noun that we've seen is the word forum, which declines forum, forum, foro, fora, and fora. Again, the difference between the nominative and accusative has to be told through the function that that word is having in the sentence. A word in Latin can only have one declension. This means that a first declension word will always be in the first declension. So puella can never change to pueli because that long I is a second declension ending. It will always change to puellae in the nominative plural. Similarly, words like servus can never change to servi, because that AE is a nominative plural ending of only the first declension. That means that servus can only change to servi. Okay, so words in different declensions have different endings. Great, but why did the Romans do this? Just to annoy students thousands of years in the future? Well, believe it or not, declensions are actually a shortcut to learning Latin. Let's take a look at the word Wila. Let's say we want to write the sentence, the girl enters the house. Puella is our nominative singular, the girl. Our verb is going to be intrat, enters. The girl is in the nominative case, so we know she's doing the action. But we need Wila to be in the accusative case. How do we make it accusative? Well, let's look at the ending. So, Wila has the same ending as Puella. That tells us that Wila is probably a first declension noun, which remember has these endings. So, if we want Wila to be accusative, we need to look at the accusative singular ending for the first declension, and that's am. So, Wila needs to be Wilam in order to fit in this sentence. The girl enters the house. Now, what if we're looking at the word hortus? Hortus ends in us just like the word servus. Since servus is second declension, that means hortus is also second declension, and it will have these endings. Now, what if we're trying to write the sentence, the girl is walking in the garden? We know we need puella, our nominative singular girl, and we need a verb which in this case is ambulat, is walking. Since Puella is nominative, she is doing the action, ambulat. But now we need the place where she is doing the action, and the ablative is responsible for telling the place where an action occurs in a sentence. So we need hortus to change to its ablative form. In this case, that is the long O of the second declension ablative, and hortus changes to horto. Now, let's look at one more example in the third declension. We have the word pater, which means father. It ends in er, which is one of the third declension nominative endings. 
Remember, our nominative in the third declension can be one of many endings, and ER is one of them. Let's try and write the sentence, the girl loves the father. If we have this sentence, we need puella again, the girl. We need the verb amat, she loves. And we need the father. What case should the father be in if he is receiving the action? Well, we know Puella needs to be nominative, so she's doing the action. Father needs to be receiving, so he is in the accusative case. And in the third declension, that's EM. So pater changes to patrem. Now we've got it. That's our brief overview of declensions and how a word's declension is used to form its endings according to its function in a sentence. You are all one big step closer to understanding Latin. Numquam de seste discate.